Hi Gemini, welcome to your February 2018 singles reading. I'm calling it, it's kind of cheesy, but um, single and ready to mingle, okay? But um, anyway, I, um, I'm putting February in front of it just so that it's searchable on YouTube. So Because I noticed when I just put 2018 that it wasn't getting the normal amount of views and I don't want it to kind of fall by the wayside so I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this every month but um, that's why I, I labeled it uh, February but I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot which I'm enjoying kind of a change of pace and I will tell you I, I've created my own spread I'll tell you about what it means in a minute and uh, really like these drawings very um, like pen and ink and kind of elegant and sparse Okay. So the the challenge card, which is in the center here, is the star card, and this is such a beautiful. Uh, I love this drawing with those pops of color, and the black and white. So if you know anything about the star card, you know that it connects with Aquarius, and its meaning is about having hopefulness in life and having a sense of being guided by maybe your spirit guides or loved ones who have crossed over just that you could say it's like kind of like a, a spiritual feeling but it's it's a positive feeling and it's a hopeful feeling and as the challenge it may be that some of you have been through a lot and it's hard to maintain that sense of wonder in life. Maybe you feel like, uh, you know, you've been raked over the coals in some way. And also, it can feel sometimes like I'll never find that my soulmate or that person. I don't like to, to emphasize soulmates, though. I like to emphasize people that you feel an affinity for that you get along with that you can they can keep your interest because for Gemini that's a tall order and I think that if you can find a person that consistently keeps your interest that you're gonna stick around and um, let me go to the this is the history card this talks about why this may be difficult for you the full card. Now typically this is one of my favorite cards because um, this is a card of being a rather adventurous person who isn't um, who's more concerned with the journey than the destination. Would I uh, consider Gemini's to be that? Yep. And this may be a double-edged sword, pardon the pun, because you're connected with swords being an air sign and there's some there's a sword right there. But um, one of the things that can happen is that the people that are the most freedom loving oftentimes find it hard to find the right person because a lot of people want to be homebodies. They want to just, um, you know, maybe even couch potatoes. And that's so not you. You're very interested in life and if you're with somebody and I was going to use the term saddle down with someone who is just like very lethargic doesn't isn't intellectually curious that's not going to work for you in the long run so it's like the expectations that you have um, 
sometimes you're you're very um, hopeful and maybe you feel like you get let down because a lot of people are not like you and this and also I would say with the full card is somebody who is co like constantly roaming the world and I heard that the term gypsy is considered a slur so it, it's a shame if that's the case because I really love that word you know it really conjures up this sense of uh, someone who is very like um, what's that nomadic but th but there's a magical element to it too and that's kind of like what I associate with Gemini that they're always looking for something more they're always curious they want to uncover every stone so just embrace who you are and you'll be fine you know don't try to conform to other people even if 90 percent of the population isn't like you all you need is one person how do you heal okay well this is the six of pentacles and this is a card of mutual mutuality and um, what I would say is look for situations where there is give and take don't um, in, in, and this is on the front end of things. If you find yourself with someone and they're doing most of the talking and you're doing most of the listening, which is hard to imagine because you guys are motor mouths, you know, for the most part. Um, but if you find yourself in a, in a situation with a self-centered individual who is doing all of the talking, then you know that's a red flag. If you find yourself in a situation where the person it, and it, that's kind of an extension of that, where they're talking about themselves and they're not asking you any questions. That's about you. They don't seem interested in you. That's a red flag. Uh, you know, things that seem imbalanced, okay, because this is a card that in the traditional depiction shows a man with the scales, and that is to indicate that um, there is a give and take, and it's tangible. You can see that there is fairness within the relationship. Now these two cards are kind of fun because it can be like what, when, where, you know, you can meet this person. One of these is the world. So they're talking about being this nomad. Maybe you'll meet somebody on some travels. You know, that's always a possibility. And by the way, there is a solar eclipse on February 15th in Aquarius, a fellow air sign, and guess what house it's going to hit for you? Your ninth house of foreign travel. So you may get an opportunity to travel in the near future, and that may be where you find the love of your life. And then, I don't know, did I pick this? I don't know if anybody noticed if I picked this upside down. Um, I didn't believe that I did, but who knows? Okay, so um, I read reversed cards. I just don't remember if I actually, because I, I don't remember it being reversed. Um, so I'll just uh, tell you what both, what both um, interpretations would be. The Four of Swords is a card of, oh, this isn't the Four of Swords, so it's the Four of Wands. Well, that could mean that you meet somebody in a situation involving, um, I mean, that could be a situation of a new home, a marriage. Maybe you meet somebody in your travels that turns into that kind of a partner. The, uh, if we look at timing issues, this could be uh, sometime in April during Aries. So... Um, if this was a reversed card, you know, we do have a Mercury retrograde happening. And by the way, they oftentimes say don't travel during Mercury retrogrades because you could have a lot of screw-ups. But let's say you started traveling in February and you just happened to be overseas when, when um, you meet this person. It, the reversed uh, um, position may just indicate it's during uh, a retrograde. But... Um, so, and it could be like in April when the sun is in Aries. But this is also a card of a happy home life and marriage. So anyone that you meet 
could be someone that is a keeper. The world card, by the way, also can just indicate somebody from a different um, culture than yours, and perhaps even uh, somebody that is part of, like, it, it could mean that you are ending a cycle in your own life, and you, this person is kind of the, is symbolic of the new cycle that the Fool card represents, okay? And the outcome is the Two of Swords, and this is a card that sometimes can indicate indecision about something. Um, maybe you meet two different people. <laughs> you know, it seems like, you know, to, uh, Geminis tend to, tend to have um, two of everything, including sometimes partners. But there is that duality because Gemini is a, um, a double sign, you know, all of the mut mutable signs are um, like that as well. But particularly for Gemini being the twins, there's always that sense of like having a hard time. It always seemed to gravitate towards two things at the same time. Doing A lot of Geminis like to multitask and they have two things going on. Maybe have two jobs, um, have two places that they live. Like, I wonder if Geminis tend to spend half the year in one place and half the year in the other place. But um, the other thing, too, is that you may feel like at an impasse for some reason. And this could be um, with a fellow swords, too. Um, so Aquarius, Libra, again, with that star card, we're looking at the sign of Aquarius. So it's possible that you have already met somebody who's an Aquarius, but you weren't sure whether or not to proceed in the relationship. And sometimes there's something that, when you get like that two of swords where there's an impasse, it's because both people are kind of um, refusing to cooperate with the other person. So something is very... Um, I don't know what, what, what could possibly be because if this is the beginning of a relationship I can't see what would happen unless the other person lives in another country and they want you to move to their country and you're not sure because it's such a big decision and in that case I wouldn't blame you um, if you've just met somebody and they're already urging you to leave your life that can be a red flag too because um, other people should understand that you would have to like make a very drastic change and likewise um, if somebody's moving too quickly that could be a red flag if they're trying to pressure you into making these drastic changes right off the bat um, they may be rather reckless in their life where they're not doing things methodically you know so anyway I hope that some of this resonates with you Gemini if you'd like a private reading I have different types you can click on the link below otherwise have an awesome February bye